so where does that come from? That relates quite uh, closely uh, to this uh, axis, which you should be uh, familiar with already. Uh, it's the so-called HPA uh, axis, the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. Uh, so basically that you have uh, release of uh, ACTH from the um, uh, pituitary gland, which will uh, activate the adrenal gland, which will release cortisol and give many of the physiological changes that you see as part of the fight and flight response. There's of course also release of uh, adrenaline, which also uh, contributes to this. Uh, so the uh, main disorder is not known, but it is known that there is an overexpression uh, of the corticotropin-releasing hormone, which is responsible for uh, activating the ACTH. Uh, precisely where that disorder is, is unknown. So what, what you can imagine here is that likely there is some uh, change in the control of uh, uh, the uh, areas in, in the midbrain which are involved in controlling also uh, the uh, endocrinic uh, system. Uh, precisely where that happens is, is unknown. And unfortunately, I, I discovered when I prepared this during the weekend that it's a little bit unfortunate that you haven't had the lecture yet on uh, feelings and emotions, which is going to come right after New Year's. Because in that lecture, we're, we're going to go through all of these structures and uh, how they uh, influence emotions and feelings and so on. So it's a little bit difficult to really understand how this is happening without that background knowledge. But you're going to get it afterwards. And the, to, to some extent, I think you can do without it right now. You will have to do without it, at least. Uh, so at least what... Um, you see in general with uh, this stress response, which is believed to be sort of underlying uh, the anxiety. It is simply the organism as a whole, the person as a whole, who has an increased level of stress, basically. That's part of the anxiety. And what you see basically is, in general, increased arousal. You have activation of the uh, HPA. Uh, axis and uh, cortisol releases uh, demonstration of this. So that's what you see in general in all of these patients with uh, anxiety. So the precise genesis of this, uh, of course, is, is not fully known, but uh, we know that uh, the HPA axis is controlled from the amygdala, which you will hear about later on, which is very central to uh, the whole uh, response to emotions uh, that we have. So the amygdala is involved in both the motor response that we have in relation to uh, emotions. When we have some uh, stimulus that frightens us, we will have a motor response to that, probably running away. The amygdala is responsible for mediating that. The amygdala is also responsible for mediating uh, other physiological manifestations of the anxiety that we feel in relation to that stimulus. So it also controls the HPA axis and has a positive influence on it and will make cortisol uh, increase. Uh, so what we know is that uh, if we have just low levels of cortisol, so basically a low level of stress is good for us because it's increasing uh, the activity of the hippocampus and there is a feed forward uh, or feedback uh, in inhibition basically on the release of the cortisol. So if you have just low level, that will activate the hippocampus which will inhibit the release of cortisol. So that's kind of good. The problem is that if it goes the other way around, if you have high levels of cortisol, uh, you actually see a decreased uh, activity and you also see uh, reduced neurogenesis and atrophy in the hippocampus uh, as a response to uh, this heightened uh, cortisol level. Uh, so this is shown, for instance, here in a paper from Biological Psychiatry in, uh, in 2006, uh, 
so this is uh, basically uh, looking at part of the hippocampus in uh, rats, which are being stressed in various ways. Uh, so this is a normal rat. You can look at uh, the dendrites, uh, the dendritic tree uh, in a normal rat in the hippocampus. If the rat is being stressed, you see that there are less uh, neurons being made, less new neurons, and the dendritic tree is somewhat less than this. If you uh, treat them with antidepressants, you can actually counteract uh, some of this reduction. Uh, so part of the antidepressive effect is to counteract uh, the effect of uh, cortisol on uh, the neurogenesis. And we're going to come back to that. But there are receptors uh, on the neurons in the hippocampus uh, where cortisol is binding and regulating uh, also the neurogenesis. And at least high levels of cortisol reduces uh, the neurogenesis whereas low level stimulates it. Which also means that if you're in a stressed situation, you're not able to remember as well. Uh, so it's been documented uh, frequently that uh, there is a very severe memory loss in relation to uh, stressful, uh, uh, or, or if, if you're chronically uh, being stressed. Uh, so this is uh, just again uh, to uh, point out the role of the amygdala, the central role of the amygdala. It is part of the circuitries which are involved in processing of uh, uh, emotions in, in uh, the, the midbrain areas around the thalamus and around the hypothalamus. And it sort of controls, as I, I said before, uh, these different uh, manifestations of uh, anxiety, basically. Uh, there's the activation of the uh, autonomous nervous system and the HPA uh, axis. There's the motor response, for instance, avoidance uh, behavior. Uh, and there's also uh, increased attention uh, and uh, uh, awareness of uh, what is going on, basically. And uh, at least uh, when you look at the processing within uh, the amygdala, when you have some kind of sensory stimulus which leads to activation here, it seems as if it is this link in the amygdala uh, between the sensory input to the nucleus and uh, the motor output basically to uh, these different effector organs uh, coming from the central uh, nucleus here. Um, that's still being investigated, but it looks as if uh, this is uh, uh, an important um, 